Bumblebee's ever tried to be a superhero? Well, I don't know. Probably because it's impossible. Putting on a mask and helping people? How's that impossible? Dude, if anybody did it in real life, they'd get their ass kicked. How is it being on the red carpet for the European premiere of something that you guys created? I, I'm amazed that there's nobody here that sounds just like me. I'm the only Brooklynite in the whole crowd. I, this is actually, I've only seen this on television, and this is fascinating. I love it. I think this is the way all things should be done, and that's the way all our films should be done. Well, I like big, as a Scotsman, I like the fact we're getting to see it for free, which is good. For me. Actually, on the subject of being Scottish, Mark, you've yeah. got your uh, train spotting with superheroes yeah. thing. Yeah. How many times have you been asked about that tonight? Quite a lot, actually. Not, not on this, on the, not on the carpet, but like, uh, yeah, I'm going to direct this movie in July. Uh, I'm just, uh, it's my first time directing. It might be rubbish. We'll see what happens. If it's rubbish, I'll never talk about it again and somehow bury it. And if it if it's turns out to be as good as I hope it does, then great. You know? Presumably, if it's in July, prep's fairly far along in terms of script, story, cast and all of that. Is there anything you can reveal to us, Mark? No, it's actually, but we're not casting until May. Uh, but we're doing an entire new cast of unknowns from Scotland. It's going to be entirely Scottish crew and everything, you know. We're doing blood tests just to make sure people are Scottish that are working on it. But, um, yeah, I'm, I'm using unknowns because uh, they're cheap. It's great, you know, and, and we'll rip them off. Fair enough. And in terms of sort of other projects, obviously you've got Nemesis as well that you're both working on. No, I'll, I'm not I'll, I'll, Nemesis. That's his brain. No, we, we're going to do Kick-Ass 2 together, but until jo Johnny's ready to start Kick-Ass 2 actually next month. So while Johnny was finishing Kick-Ass, I, I wrote a book called Nemesis for a mate of mine called Steve McNevin, and it's out this Wednesday. So that'll be a movie hopefully later, well, so hopefully start filming at the, the end of the year. Yeah. So how did you, you're, you're obviously, you were last in 500 Days of Summer. And then this. Bit different. They're definitely two different roles, but absolutely amazing roles. How was it jumping between the sort of the very sort of sweet natured but slightly sarcastic tomboy and then psychopath? Um well I wouldn't say she's a psychopath, but she is a really awesome crazy crime fighting assassin. Crazy crime fighting assassin. Nice. What I I'm curious, how you how did your parents react? I presume they've seen the film and they were on set with you. Yeah, my, my parents actually read the script before I did, and my mom knew that it was an absolutely amazing character and it was a role that, you know, anyone could kill for. <laughs> nice. And what are you in next? Um, I just worked a film with Martin Scorsese. It's called The Invention of Hugo Cabre with Ben Kingsley and Sasha Baron Cohen and Asa Butterfields. Nice, thank you very much. So, how was it then with uh, Kick-Ass? Obviously, it's very different from what you're most known for, which is McLovin. Right. How was it sort of jumping between the two and finding the character? Um, it was a lot of fun. You know, Matthew really trusted me with the role. It's, not, it's I've never done, I've never been in an action movie. I've never done something like this. And uh, he could have gave it to somebody like Paul Dano or someone who's a really talented actor and could nail this role. But he believed in me, he gave it to me, and uh, he let me try something new, and I think it turned out well. Fair play. And has it whetted your taste for action films and superhero films? Where's my taste? We has it whetted your appetite? Oh, oh completely, yeah. I'm going to be uh, Michael Bay's new muse. Non-stop action explosive movies. <laughs> what are you sort of looking forward to next with your career? Is it Kick-Ass 2 or is it something big in between? I think we all want to do a Kick-Ass 2, but we got to wait to see if this one does well. Um, but yeah, I get back. I have an animated movie coming out called How to Train a Dragon I did a voice for. And then uh, when I get back to LA, I have a few scripts that I'm attached to, but too early in production to really talk about. Hey, UK. You what? Hate you guys? Hey, you guys? Hey, you guys? I thought it was some sort of uh, website for haters. No. Okay, I'll say hello to you because you're like nice young men. Thank you very much. Well, that's, that's impressive. You, when know. you know the truth. Well, I'm kind of lying. <laughs> what you? You're obviously you're uh, you're involved with the film. Your wife. I'm not. I'm not really well. involved in the film. Uh, my my wife wrote it or co-wrote it with Matthew. But I'll be honest with you, he just scribbles a few lines. There. She does all the actual work, as you probably know. But I'm just a uh, Phil because I'm a huge comic fan, and they've done such a great job. Genuinely. It's, it's awesome, so I can't wait to see it again. I take it you've seen it a few times I've now. Seen, I've seen it a few different stages, and I went to one of the early tests where they asked your opinion, and almost everything I said, they ignored. And they were quite too. But of course, I always write a long list from Matthew and go, you've got to change this, you've got to change that. That doesn't work, and he reads it all, and he goes, you don't know anything. Which is quite a good impersonation. If you get him like that, that's how he speaks, he speaks like that. Are you enjoying being probably the most popular British actor of the moment? You're, you're in just about everything now, yeah, aren't you? Well, I was just saying earlier on, it's law. If you don't have me in a film, you could go to prison, frankly. 
Nice. And how's the reuniting with uh, Matthew been? Great. Great. I mean, the, the one joy uh, about being an actor is that you can get to work with people again who you enjoy working with, and the fact that they asked me to do projects with them is a real, you know, compliment. And obviously now you're not just getting the British films, so you've got Hollywood not so much knocking on your door as beating it down, robbing you out of the house and casting you as just about anything going, haven't you? Well, what's, what's nice is I feel like I've been doing it for a while, and um, what I've now become good at is the thing that they want. So uh, they keep offering me these interesting characters, and I feel like I, I keep thinking maybe not, maybe not, maybe I shouldn't, maybe, but then it comes along and I see it and I think, yeah, I want to do that, you know? And, what I've realised is I've, I've got a blockbuster coming out for the next three years. I've got Robin Hood coming out after this, and then there'll be Green Lantern, the Martin Campbell film, and then it'll be John Carter of Mars in 2012. So I'll be around for a bit. Obviously, you, you mentioned Green Lantern, and we'll get on to John Carter in a second, but you mentioned Green Lantern. Is there anything you can tell us about it more in terms of what you're doing, in terms of what, how, how your role is? What you're playing. I can't give much away. I'm playing a character called Sinestro, who is the arch nemesis of Hal Jordan, the Green Lantern. And the film is following the origin story pretty closely. So, in that case, Sinestro isn't the arch nemesis to start with, then, presumably? Uh, he is Hal's mentor, but you'll have to go and see it to find out. OK. I can't tell you any more than that because they'll cut my legs off. <laughs> OK. And uh, as for John Carter of Mars, you're obviously... I've, I've spoken very briefly with um, James Purfoy oh, yes. about John Carter. And he yeah. was... It, it wasn't so much that he couldn't tell us, it was that he did, just didn't know. Because I, I understand it's a lot of green screen. Oh, yeah, yeah. Was, there's a lot of acting in a massive warehouse with green walls. It's, a, it's like doing a jigsaw, that film. Really good time. Andrew, the director, has it in his mind exactly what he's after. And our job is to give him those bits of the jigsaw that he can then put together. So, Aaron, you're obviously this is your second leading performance in the space of, what, eight months? Less than that, isn't it? Uh, guess so. How's that feel? It's, a, it's sort of naught to 60 in it's no time at all. <laughs> um, wait, um, I'm really fortunate and lucky to be, uh, to be, to be here. Um, and be a part of that. I mean, I, I, I don't really know what to say. I mean, it wasn't in my interest. It wasn't like, oh, it wasn't my plan to, you know what I mean? I, I suppose. I was lucky. But... Fair enough. And how was it moving between the two projects from sort of jo a, an icon to a comic book? <laughs> I, well, I filmed this one first. I did kick ass first. And um, it, it was, it was quite a, a strange um, transformation into, uh, you know, a comic book fan, reader, super a amateur superhero into. Um, you know, a rock and roll legend. Um, it was uh, a mad jump and leap. Are you a fan of comics? You said, did you read certainly the Kick-Ass comic? Yeah, of course. Yeah, well, at the time there was only issues one to three, and then by the time we finished filming, there was only issue five came out. Um, yeah, and huge, you know, fan of Mark Miller stuff. I obviously wanted um, a fantastic comic book, and you know, but before that, I was huge into the films. You know, comic like Batman's and uh, you know Tim Burton's version, obviously, and. Uh, you know, the Spider-Man, X-Men. I mean, so far we've been just overwhelmed by the response. We've been getting five-star reviews, people coming out massively excited, which is just so exciting for us. So we have no idea what people would think of it. And so, so far the response has been just the most exciting thing ever. I, honestly, I'm not exaggerating. It's the most exciting thing I've been involved in. It's amazing. Who do you think people would be walking away talking about most, Aaron or Chloe? You know what, people are bowled over by Hit Girl because I think they're not expecting it, but I mean everyone's been incredibly, correctly, incredibly complimentary about Aaron's performance. It, they're both extraordinary, uh, you know, genuinely. What about, what about getting Nick Cage on board? How, how much of a boom was that? Oh man, we were so excited. You know, and the fact that he brought to it this extreme craziness and his idea about doing an Adam West voice, he was so tuned into the idea, he was absolutely on our wavelength. So we were very lucky. What did you see in Kickass that made you want to bring into the screen? Uh, that he was a modern, relevant superhero. We haven't had one for, well, I'm just, I don't know, I can't remember the last time we had one. Spider-Man from the 60s, Batman from the 30s, Iron Man 60s, Watchmen 80s. Why don't we do something from now? What was it you made Aaron White for the role? Watched the movie. He is what he, he came in, that's what the screen test was like. It was perfect. Was like, oh, yeah.